and condensate. Mr. Speaker, part of PFG 2's program strategy is to support the private commercial agriculture under the Economic Enclaves Project. Towards this, priority has been given to securing and developing lands to offer security of tenor for large-scale agriculture investments. The focus on large-scale commercial agriculture is to harness the benefits of scale and scope of economics, promote the adoption of technology for efficiency and standardization, as well as support price stabilization efforts. As of December 2022, three enclaves in Kasonya, Greater Accra, Kumewu, Ashanti, and Banda Oti region were operational. Five out of five other enclaves are planned in 2024 to promote value addition, integration, and deepening aggregation and value chain systems to serve as economic growth goals. The three operational EEPs will lead to production of 160,000 metric tons of rice by end of 2024, over 110,000 acres of land in cultivation for the key staples, private sector actors investing on EEP will provide employment for the youth of a target of at least 5,000 jobs. Already, Mr. Speaker, 10 private sector actors have responded to the expression of interest to predominantly act as anchor farmers on the developed lands. Government will also pursue the interest expressed by other international private sector operators to unlock investments and technology for the economic enclave projects. We are also using the e Bank to implement the economic enclave at scale and speed. As I mentioned, Ghana City's one billion has been allocated to Millennium Development Authority to complement PFJ 2.0. This funding will be dedicated to providing critical infrastructure, including irrigation canals, as well as cleaning and developing, developing land for private sector actors in the EEP. Other key interventions under the Ghana CARES program, such as the completion of a foundry, will benefit from this fund. MIDA has a remarkable record from the implementation of two compacts under the Millennium Challenge Corporation, one of which was agriculture and agribusiness. They continue to demonstrate experience and ingenuity that will accelerate the delivery of the growth goals to transform agriculture in our country. Mr. Speaker, the Digital Youth Village as a key initiative under Ghana Cares involves collaboration between the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization, Ministry of Finance and University of Ghana to support tech entrepreneurs and create vibrant tech hubs. To date, the DYB project has completed the design, land, location, site clearance, as well as securing an architect and contractor initiating the construction phase. Phase one of DYB project is expected to be completed before end December 2024. Mr. Speaker, in the area of trade, industry, and export, the key operations under 1D1F free zones, export promotion, strategic and core industries, and business regulatory reforms have been prioritized under the growth strategy. Altogether, earnings from non-traditional export are expected to increase to 4 billion and 4.8 billion in 2024 from 3.51 billion in 2022. 271 licensed free zone companies are expected to increase earnings to 2.19 billion in 2024 compared to earnings of 1.8 billion from 207 licensed free zone companies in 20. 22. Mr. Speaker, Ghana remains the re preferred tourist destination in the sub-region. The steady stream of domestic and international tourists also requires dedicated spaces in cities to drive a night economy and tourism. As we promote, promote December in Ghana initiatives, we will also work towards enhancing security and the lightning infrastructure. A tax 
force comprising public regulators and private sector actors has already been established to drive the Night Economy Initiative and the public-private partnership arrangements. Mr. Speaker, on 14th November 2022, almost exactly a year ago, government launched the Youth Start Initiative as a direct response to the employment challenge facing our country. Through this initiative, government sought to create an entrepreneurial nation by providing training, competitive funding, access to markets and technology to our youth. This is to cause a cultural shift and guide our teaming youth into entrepreneurship by assisting them to start to build and grow their own businesses. Mr. Speaker, a year on, the preparatory works have been completed. The three components of the initiative, Youth Start District, Entrepreneurship Program, Commercial Program, and the Youth Start Grace Program have also been developed and piloted successfully. On 20th September 2022, government signed an MOU with 11 banks and the Ghana Association of Bankers to support entrepreneurs gain access to capital to enhance their business. The Ghana Association of Banks have worked with us to train the participating financial institutions on the program and have completed the design of a technology platform to receive applications. The National Banking College has also been engaged of the participating banks. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Enterprises Agency and the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. The Speaker, all is set to accelerate the implementation of 150 million US dollars on our own we are committing 200 million Ghana cities to ensure that more. The Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, through their strategic partners, has completed the mineral resource estimate report that has been prepared in line with joint all. Reserves Committee standards. The result. Mr. Speaker, the master plan has been reviewed and given a seal of approval by KPMG. To ensure, Mr. Speaker, the various mineral discoveries are informed, deposits of iron ore are commercially viable, a high level mineral resource study has been commissioned by GSDEC, working with the private partners. The capital incentive activity has been uploaded to Ghanaian private partners to produce a standard bankable report at no cost to the government of Ghana. This is to ensure that the integrated iron and steel industry is not faced with a continuous decline of domestic production and processing of metallic minerals and associated dependence on foreign supplies for our needs. Mr. Speaker, key interventions to improve the business environment include Enhancing the business regulatory reform, crowding in private sector financing of 20 billion through foreign direct investments, and amendments to the GIPC Act has been completed and submitted to Parliament. The Speaker, the group strategy sets ambitious targets for e plans of the Development Bank of Ghana. Gessel, Venture Capital Trust Fund, and the Ghana Investment Infrastructure Fund to provide loans, partial guarantees, and venture capital to private entities with transformational and strategic projects in agriculture. Mr. Speaker, channels would include the Development Bank of Ghana to increase the lending volume of the Development Bank of Ghana to 2 billion CDs for 20. 24. For Gezel to provide 350 million partial risk guarantees 
to leverage private sector participation in the agriculture 24 to support their work. Speaker, the IFC working with government will pursue the recapitalization of banks. Mr. Speaker, government and the World Bank will recapitalize the banks through the Ghana Financial Stability Fund and of private sector businesses. Mr. Speaker, the banks will be recapitalized in the coming week. Furthermore, Venture Capital Trust will be given additional funds to ensure that the private sector has access to that. Mr. Speaker, the stock of global debt as a share of global GDP was, was 238%, 9 percentage points higher than in 2019. To return Ghana to a path of debt sustainability from a debt to GDP ratio of 89%, Mr. Speaker, we aim to be at 66% this year. The goal is to achieve a 55% debt to GDP ratio and 18% revenue to GDP ratio over the medium term. Mr. Speaker, Ghana completed the first phase of the DDP in February 2023, where 82 billion CDs of all domestic debts were exchanged for new bonds. In this process, Mr. Speaker, the average coupon of 9.1% were achieved with a participation rate of 84%. Mr. Speaker, we have come to the end of the domestic debt exchange program. Even today, even more to enable us to reach the target landing zone of 55%. Mr. Speaker, of 20 to 40% haircut, under 20 years, and interest rates of less than 5%. Ghana bilateral creditors, Mr. Speaker, are also working with us, and we expect the OCC, Mr. Speaker, China will deliver the appropriate MOU to the IMF to achieve a participation rate of 84%. Mr. Speaker, uh, we have come to the end of the domestic debt exchange program. Even today, even more to enable us to reach the target landing zone of 55%. Mr. Speaker, of 20 to 40% haircut, under 20 years, and interest rates of less than 5%. Ghana bilateral creditors, Mr. Speaker, are also working with us, and we expect the OCC. Mr. Speaker, China will deliver the appropriate MOU to the IMF for their board meeting next week. Week also extensive um, discussions of our IPPs um, should lead to some resolutions on uh, our payments of energy systems. And Mr. Speaker, I'm confident that this will successfully be done in the coming uh, few days. Dollars uh, from the World Bank supported uh, by subfund targeted at qualifying banks and SDIs and a city equivalent financial institution as well as potentially supporting other indigenously controlled financial institutions. In addition, a provision of $4 billion has been made in the 2024 budget to address the NIB, distressed SDIs, and other outstanding legacy policies in the financial sector. Notwithstanding the ongoing litigation commenced by shareholders of Black Shield Capital Management Limited, formerly Gold Shield Securities, the SEC 
will continue to engage the official liquidator and clients of the defined black shield to reach a consensus on a framework for a bailout intervention and an amicable resolution to the impact. Mr. Speaker, in the 2024 budget, government will build on the significant investment that has been made to date and promote its key interventions. Mr. Speaker, on social spending. The government's flagship free senior high school and TVET programs continues to create and expand access to secondary school education in the country. In a generation's time when we have a more educated population. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, far from this, in the, con in the year under review, we continue to support a total of 448,000 first year senior high school students. bringing the total beneficiaries and capacitation grants to all public basic schools across the country. Additionally, registration fees of over 471,000 prospective candidates from public junior high school for the BC were paid to guarantee that all candidates will sit for the examination. It's a seeker support for beneficiaries of the LEAP program was sustained in 2023. Government invested some 298 million to support 350,000 families. In 2024, the program will be will improve financing by 50% more and continue to provide meals to more schools to enhance basic school enrollment. The National Health Insurance Scheme, is a speaker, is now active with coverage of 60 million people, representing 80% of the targeted group. Efforts to integrate the Ghana card into the Roman system are progressing steadily. Mr. Speaker, over 70, 740 in 10,000 of our public basic schools. In 2024, the program continued to provide hills to enhance basic school enrollment. Mr. Speaker, we continue to improve on our road networks. And Mr. Speaker, once the official creditor committee has made its announcement, we will continue with all extended funded projects that will be resumed. However, the overflowing projects are ongoing and are at various stages of completion. Kumasi Lake Road and Drainage Extension Project is completed. Reconstruction of Bichem Techimanshia Akumadin Road is 71% complete. Construction of flyover on the Accra Tema Motorway from Flower Port Runabout is 60% complete. Phase 2 of the Tema Motorway Runabout, including construction of the third tier of the interchange, is 56% complete. Construction of four major bypasses at Osino, Enyinem, Enyurisi, and Konongo along the Accra Kumasi Highway commence in 2023 and at various stages of completion. Reconstruction of Agona and Kwantatoka Road is 44% complete. Dualization of whole main roads and traffic management works 100% complete. Selected roads in second D and Takradi phase one is 28% complete. Dualization of Insawam of Fanko Road including the widening of the road to 10 lanes of a six-lane expressway mid-year and in Sawan project is 30% complete. Construction of four-tier interchange at Swame in the Ashanti region has commenced. With a speaker, The following projects under the Master Project Agreement, Western Region and Cup Coast Inner Sea 
city roads, construction of Paul Hoy Jessica. However, the following at various stages of city roads, PTC ran about interchange tap riding 80%. Mr. Speaker, government is in the preparation for the reconstruction of the Accra Tema motorway under the road sector's public private partnership with GIF its own course. The concession agreement and draft engineering procurement. Government infrastructure program will also be anchored on a strong private sector collaboration. To this end, government will continue to pursue the mining sector roads rehabilitation projects to improve the road network. of agreements to fund and set communities in Congo. Mr. Speaker, to promote trade and transit from the Tema port, the capacity of Tema Hospital Road will be improved under PPP arrangements. Accordingly, government has developed a deed of transfer. to be executed. The contract terms of the large general hospital project and will now be funded through the national budget. The contractor is expected, Mr. Speaker, to be back on site next week to complete a significant amount of work by 2024. government's strong commitment to industrialization a total of 160 and additional 152 factories are currently under construction and expected to be fully operational in 2024 these industries are expected to increase value addition support our efforts to reset the economy. The sub-region and facilitate tourism, the upgrading of the Tamale airport has been completed. To complement this effort and is being executed and it's about 54% complete. Point approval of Ghana's energy transition investment plan government has commenced the development of a national electric vehicle policy as part of efforts to create an enabling environment for the uptake of electric vehicles. Mr. Speaker, government has rolled out the National Rental Assistance Scheme in February 2023 to ease the burden of huge rent advance payments by prospective tenants. of 300 involving the construction of 320 units for the Ghana Police Service at the Ghana National Police Training School, Tesano. In addition, work commenced on the first phase of the revised National Affordable Housing Program at Pokwase that was launched by His Excellency the President and the Minister of Works and Housing. Government will commence work on the National Affordable Housing Project at the DSO. Another infrastructure 
Minister for Poverty Eradication Program. Government continues to embark on strategic investment across our communities nationwide in line with the fiscal consolidation plan. Through the development authorities, over 340 projects were completed in 2023 and accordingly handed over to the beneficiary communities. Rural telephony. Mr. Speaker, government constructed a total of 1,010 rural telephony sites under the rural telephony and digital inclusion project. to provide voice signals in underserved and unserved communities and finance for voice and data services to ensure reliable, affordable, and secured broadband infrastructure under the infrastructure. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we're we'll to rural by 2024. A total of 189 communities have been connected to the national grid, with 211 communities at various stages of completion. The national electricity access is, is, is estimated uh, to have reached 88 90% by the end of 2024. Uh, Mr. Speaker, under the Girls in ICT initiative, 2,000 girls and 200 ICT teachers in the Savannah and Northern regions were trained. Additionally, a total of 287 laptops were presented to the best performing students and teachers in both the Savannah and Northern regions. In 2024, 3,000 girls and 300 ICT teachers will be trained in Ashanti, Greater Accra, and Water regions. Government, Mr. Speaker, seeks to continue to find a program to resource a one laptop a child program um, so that the population will become tech. The platform deployed in 2020 has onboarded 1541 MDAs, MMDAs, and state owned enterprises, with 130 of these entities actively utilizing platform for various functions, including processing payments. This has yielded a total of 164 billion since its inception. In 2024, NITA will enroll government agencies responsible for revenue collection onto the platform. In addition, a citizen's app will be integrated into the platform to enrich citizens to government engagement and allow persons who disabled. Mr. Speaker, the new case that ensure public officers submit their declaration in time and that an effective verification system is in place. The draft bill is an action of the second phase of the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan to foster public accountability and transparency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, government will continue to resource the Ghana Armed Forces, Halt, Gongo, Conquered Fit, etc. Mr. Speaker, the establishment of 15 forward Bay forward operations are also progressing steadily. In addition, The, S, the FOB at its level in the Western region is to be sustained. And Mr. Speaker, the police service improved community watch program for professional motorbike riders has elevated the sense of 
security in the country. The service received 100 Toyota high Like pickups, patrol units to enhance their work. Mr. Speaker, immigration service is also being improved. The service also conducted. 5,900 inspections at various locations and negotiations. Engagements have centered on the sustainability of Ghana's energy sector, as well as the restructuring of legacy IPPs and power purchase agreements. Future proven timely payment to IPPs going forward and the implementation of critically needed energy sector, but to collaborate with compelling investment climate. It's been at the forefront for advocacy for a fit for climate global financial architecture General meetings, Ghana secured. This, this include fifty point expect to earn over forty five million in twenty twenty four Sweden, South Korea, as well as some um, Mr. Speaker, our leadership as chair of the climate vulnerable forum and the vulnerable twenty group. It's a prime example directed by our Ministers of Finance, Environment, Science and Technology, and Innovation, and by standing in climate discussions, but also champion the interests of climate vulnerable nations. Our President Nana Dudankwa Kufuado chairs the CVF. Since 2021, under the direction of the Ghana's direction, the CVF and V20 have driven a forward-thinking agenda to counter climate change threats. Crucially, Ghana has yes. also yes. 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 environment for resilient growth and sustainable development. Mr. Speaker, advocating for reform, the global and growth and sustainable development are the forefront. By championing this, Ghana will lead with a vision for climate resilience in a more environmentally imperative way. It is a pathway to enduring prosperity and stability for developing countries globally, ensuring that we are equipped to face climate challenges while progressing towards a sustainable and prosperous future. Mr. Speaker, today I have highlighted our collective impacted individuals, households, businesses and communities. We have, Mr. Speaker, a safer country. We have a more physically and digitally connected society. We have a more educated and skilled population. Through our policy approach, the foundation for a country has been laid where ingenuity being encouraged, innovation is supported, public service is valued, responsibility is shared, prosperity is shared, and accountability for the custodianship of public resources 2017. At that time, Mr. Speaker, doom so had the same 
estimated the incomes of businesses home for years without employment. We're unable to assess senior high school education. Above all, our economic prospects are deemed considerable. I refer then to the biblical story of five loaves and two fishes to illustrate the approach in turning the economy around. Mr. Stuka, as soon In March 27, and asks that the country's poultry too and the Lord in response has blessed our nation, and this we should not forget. From a nominal GDP invested in the future of our children under the Free SHS program with 1.2 million students having access to a beneficiary household from 212,000 in 2017 to 350,000 in 2023 with an aim of million pupils in our basic schools and provided steady income stream for 32,000. 496 caterers. We invested the most in the construction, rehabilitation, and upgrading of major roads networks across the country. We supported small businesses with 750 million during the COVID-19 pandemic through the Cup Bus program and other interventions. We invested, Mr. Speaker, in making sure All public workers were paid every month during the COVID-19 pandemic, including the teachers who were paid for all the nine months when the academic calendar was disrupted. We invested to strategically establish 160 factories across the districts under 1D1F. Investing in the expansion of health infrastructure in every district under the Agenda 111 initiative. The greatest health care push in the history of our country. Mr. Speaker, let me make this opportunity to recognize the strong partnership that has coexisted between the government and organized labor over this period. I also want to use the occasion to thank the leadership of organized labor for their positive cooperation since 2017. Yesterday, as I mentioned, 14 November 2023, we successfully concluded negotiations for the 2024 single spine salary structure, the pace pay, which culminated in a 23% increase in the pace of an additional 2% to 25% from July 2024 to December 2024. This wouldn't have been possible without the cooperation and strong leadership of labor unions. We thank you. Since then, we have stayed focused on our plans. However, it is not smooth sailing. There have been ebbs and flows. We have faced severe headwinds since March 2022 as an economy. The economy has faced multiple shocks. We have not created Enough jobs and food inflation remains high, creating hardships, and we are committed to tackling this. Backed by the PCPEG, the 2023 budget seeks to restore and sustain macroeconomic stability. With hard work and the grace of God, we are on the path of stability and growth. Thankfully, a sense of a new beginning has taken place. Despite our remarkable progress in the last 10 months, risks still are The implementation of government PC PEC, which are
addresses these pressures is delivering the immediate intended results. We have successfully concluded the domestic debt operation completion of key transformative interventions to improve the quality of life and welfare of our people. Mr. Speaker, for our future, large public spending and deficits cannot remain embedded in our public policy program. So after achieving macroeconomic stability, the gains will be anchored on enhanced fiscal responsibility rules. The IMF is already working with us to strengthen these rules in order to maintain macroeconomic stability and implement Mr. Speaker, 24 investment in the rail sector to implement the new growth strategy to consolidate and complete the ongoing infrastructure work that remains attractive for domestic and foreign investment. Feedback from my center of engagement with key stakeholders, the various components of the government owned financial ecosystem, such as development, Bank of Ghana, GCB, CB, to address the concerns of the private sector materials. Mr. Speaker, we do this to enjoy. Mr. Speaker, we continue to optimize our tourism infrastructure. The improvement in key tourist sites have been complemented by aggressive marketing. To reposition Ghana. Next month, as in recent years, our country will to an increase our investment in CCTVs and our roads and provisions of increased logistics for the security services will continue to support these events and make them memorable. These investments would also facilitate the posting of the 13th All Africa. Ghana has strategically positioned itself to mobilize climate financing and champion a fit for climate global architecture that will stay ahead of the game. Mr. Speaker, a new and exciting opportunity is Ghana's new fund wealth in lithium and graphite. Speaker, the Minerals Income Investment Fund has acquired a 6% contributor interest in Atlantic Lithium's Ghana portfolio. In view, in line with Ghana's localization policy, Atlantic Lithium will list on the Ghana Stock Exchange to further enhance and deepen local participation. Mr. Speaker, we are in a better place than we were before. The nation has been positively impacted and positioned to hand all has not given us a spirit of fear. But Mr. Speaker, a spirit of courage and of love and of a sound mind. Resilience since 2017. 
it's important to recall that despite, Mr. Speaker, the poly crisis of 2019, poly crisis 19 billion. to wonder that it is possible. It is possible to triple, to quadruple our GDP. It is possible to create a technologically savvy environment. It is possible to be the investment hub of the region. We should therefore, Mr. Speaker, be collectively proud of ourselves and the can-do spirit of our people. We have proven that a lot more is possible if we stay the course and believe in a future of immense potential to speak one language. This is Ghana, on the path to manifest destiny, every opportunity to safeguard progress must be protected by adherence to exhortations and do the impossible. Mr. Speaker, the people, Mr. Speaker, as we have all and make us steadfast to build together a nation that is great and strong in unity. Mr.